Equivalent ratios, that's what we're going to be learning today. Equivalent ratios for sixth grade math on Envision 2.0. This is 5-2, practice and problem solving. If you want to follow along, do your homework with us. And uh, I'll help you through these. These have different, uh, similar, but different numbers than you might have. They might be the same, they might not. But the point is not to uh, just get the answers, but to learn right along with me. So it's um, my name is Jason Jacobs. I'll be your private tutor for today for free. Find three ratios that are equivalent to the given ratio of four to five. So ratios are also a fraction. So this is a four to five ratio. And what I like to do with this is you could make a ratio table. And I'll show you what that looks like. Now you could extend it out like this and um, multiply by two. So four to five. So four times two is eight. Five times two is 10. Now I'm going to go back to the 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 5 times 3 is 15. So this ratio table should help you. 4 times uh, 4 is 16. And 5 times 4 is 20. And 4 times uh, 5 is 20. And 5 times 5 is 25. So this is an example of a ratio table, which you can make real quick. And as you can see, 8 to 10 is equal to 45. 12 to 15 is equal to 45. 16 to 20 is equal to 45. 20 to 25 is equal to 45. So you see that right here, this 8 to 10? Yeah, right here, guys. 8 to 10, that's equal to 4 to 5. See, 4 times 2 is 8, and 5 times 2 is 10. So as long as you're multiplying or dividing by the same number, they're going to be equivalent ratios because it's like multiplying or dividing by one because like two over two is equal to one. So that's why it works. Uh, 12 to 15 is equal to four to five, but that's not 12 to 15, guys. That is uh, four times three is 12 and five times three is 15. That's not one of them. How about this one? They trick you. Four times four is 16. Five times four is 20. That's not one of them either, guys. How about right here? 4 times 4 is um, 16, 5 times 4 is 20. Yeah, see, if you just do the ratio table at the start, you should get it. And over here, 12 to 15, we can see that's on our ratio table. 8 to 20, nope, nice try, but you're not tricking us. 12 to 10, that doesn't even make sense because, look, that's um, an improper fraction, and this is a proper fraction, so it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that at all. Another strategy you can do is reduce all of these to lowest terms and whichever ones are equal to the lowest terms. Are it, this one's already in lowest terms. I recommend if this is not in lowest terms to reduce it to lowest terms. Another solution is to find the decimal for each one of them. Another way you could do it is uh, line up each fraction and cross multiply. That's another way. All right, so I'm going to stick with the ratio table method. Uh, 7 times 2 is 14, 3 times 2 is 6, 7 times 3 is 21, 3 times 3 is 9, 7 times 4 is 28, and you got multiplied by the same number, 3 times 4 is 12, 7 times 5 is 35, 3 times 5 is 15, that might get us through it. If you just do that, I mean, you got them pretty much right away. 14 to 6 is equal to 7 to 3, so it's not that one. 21 to 9. See, 7 times 3 is 21, and 3 times 3 is 9, so not that one. Man, they're trying to trick us today. Uh, 7 times 2 is 14, and 3 times 2 is not that one. 21 to 9, do you see that one on the table? Because 7 times 3 is 21, and 3 times 3. It's got to either multiply or divide by the same number. Not add or subtract. They're going to try to trick, trick you on the quiz. Take note of that. They try to trick you on the quiz with that one. Uh, 21 to 6 is not on there. 28 to 12, that one is on there. That has a relationship of 4 there, if you can see that. 14 to 6 is on there. And I hope you can see how the ratio tables really, really help you. Okay, now, uh, in this case, guys, we are going to reduce this. So the first thing I would do is reduce it. So I'd write it as a 
fraction, because that's what we're used to doing. And then that's equal to 5 to 6. Do you see 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. Now, instead of doing the ratio table, I'll teach you a shortcut. So now what I'm going to do is um, find a relationship right away, and I'm going to do it with this 20. So 5 times 4 is 20. So 4 is my relationship. 6 times 4 is 24. So 20 to 24 should be what I'm looking for. It is not this one. So in my head, I cross that out. And then I immediately look for, is there a 20, 20 to 24? And I found it. Okay, so do you see how you can do this real quick? Okay, so I'm looking for a relationship with 20. Uh, 10 times 2 is 20. And I have to do 12 times 2 is 24. So 20 to 24 is what I'm looking for, and I already found it there. So now 30. 10 times 3 is 30. 12 times 3 is 36. So we found one, guys, right there. We have found one. That works. Now, you see how this one, you see how 30 to 36 worked, which means 30 to 6 would not work. This is just a little shortcut I do. I'm doing most of it in my head. I recommend writing it down if you're not as, as fluent on it. Hey, do you see how we already reduced this one to 5 to 6? 5 to 6, not 5 to 36. Uh, so we do see 5 to 6, though. And we know it cannot be equal to 5 to 24 because it's equal to 5 to 6. So we crossed that one out. So I think we got it. I'm just teaching you a multitude of different ways. The main thing is uh, 10 to 12, reduce that right away to lowest terms, and then find a relationship and see if it matches up. All right, we're flying right along here. Uh, something's happening. <laughs> it's happening again. Find three ratios that are equivalent to the given ratio. All right, so 2 to 13, that's already in lowest terms. So let's do uh, times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 13 times 2 is 26, so not that one. So 4 to 26 is one of them, and I found it. So now I'm going to go on to this one, 6. 2 times what is 6, guys? That's right, 2 times 3. So now I do 13 times 3 is 39, so that is one of them. 2 times 4 is 8. 13 times 4 is not 26. It is 52. So 8 to 52. All right. Yep. You can see how they're trying to trick you on these because they have some of the common ones there. You could also reduce all of these to lowest terms and see if you can get it. For example, Uh, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. For example, let's look at 6. 6 out of 26 reduces to uh, divide by 2, divide by 2, 3 to 13. So you can see this is 2 to 13. So that's that can't be it. So that's another way. You could also convert them all to decimals, and they would all have equivalent decimals. All right. Now for the meat and potatoes. A teacher kept, these are ratio tables, a teacher kept track of what students consumed at a school picnic for three grades. The ratio of the amount of water consumed to the amount of fruit juice consumed were equivalent. Complete the table. So in fifth grade, we had seven gallons of water to eight gallons of juice. Now what you want to do here, guys, is look for a relationship in the ratio table. So seven times what is 21? Do you see what it is? 7 times 3 is 21. Now, if you multiply by 3 here, I multiplied by 3 here. 8 times 3 is 24. So 24 goes in. Okay, now we do it again. 7 times what is 35? 7 times what is 35? That's right, 5. So 7 times 5 is 35. That's your magic multiplier or your relationship, your mathematical relationship. 8 times 5 is 40. That's it. Okay, same thing here. We 
We have a parking lot. We have hybrids to total. What is a hybrid? Hybrid vehicles. Okay. Hybrid vehicles are like they save on gas, I think. They might be half electric, half gas. So you could like plug it in. I guess that's still wasting electricity. I don't have a hybrid, but maybe one day. Find the relationship. Nine. So five to nine is the ratio. And uh, let's see. Five to nine is the ratio. What am I doing? I'll erase that. Okay. Nine times what is 72? That's right, eight. So we do five times eight, and we get 40. So therefore, what this is saying is five to nine is equal to 40 to 72. Now, five times what is 35? Seven. Five times seven is 35. So nine times seven is 63. So 5 to 9 is equal to 40 to 72 is equal to 35 to 63. And those ratios are all equivalent there. All right. Uh, what's this one say? Let's see. Equivalent ratios can be found by extending pairs of rows and columns in a multiplication table. Write three ratios. I like when they tell you how many you're looking for, right? <laughs> three ratios equivalent to two to four using the multiplication table. Let me teach you how to do this, guys. This is pretty cool. Okay, so we're looking, uh, do you see two to four right here? Two to four. So two to four, and we're going to extend that. I don't even know why they put zero in. Never seen that before. So two to four is equal to 4 to 8, is equal to 6 to 12, is equal to 8 to 16, is equal to 10 to 20, is equal to 12 to 24. Well, that's neat. So let me shrink that up for us. I guess that's as much of a shrinking as we're going to get. I'll put this over here. All right. What am I doing? Let's just see which one I'm covering up and see if it's on there. All right. So the one I'm covering up, guys, is 10 to 24. Well, it's 12 to 24, so we know it's not that one that I'm covering up. Okay. Now I can move it over if it would let me. But we do, let's see if we have a 6 to 12. Yep, 6 to 12, so that is one of them. 8 to 16, so you see the 8 to the 16, that's there. 12 to, no, it's 12 to 24. Plus, that's an improper, and that's a proper. That's improper. 4 to 8, so we have 4 to 8, so that is on there, guys. And 3 to 5, that just doesn't seem right, does it? No, because it's not right. 3 to 5, see, 4 to 8 is a half. 2 to 4 is a half. 3 to 5 is 0.6 or 60%. It's not it. Okay, well, we found three of them. So there we go. Okay, now, oh, we have a proportion. 10 miles is about 16, that means like approximately or about 16 kilometers. So they're setting a proportion here. So 10, 10 goes in here. And now we find out a relationship. So 16 times what is 124? Sometimes I reduce this to lowest terms to get like 5 to 8. But here we're going to try it. So it, it's, it's okay if you put in your calculator 124 divided by 16. We get 7.75. Wow. So that is your uh, multiplier right there, 7.75. And now we multiply 10 times 7.75, which just moves the decimal over one place, and you get 77.5. That's a little hack for you, a little trick. Okay. How is the term used to describe a ratio relationship in context of an expression? So, let's see. The term of a ratio is the sum of the 
quantities being compared. The terms in an expression are the parts that are separated by multiplication. No, a term in an expression are separated by addition or subtraction, okay? So that's an important distinction. The terms of the ratio of the quantities being compared, the terms in expression are, yep, so that part is right, but I think this is the, um, the sum of the quantities being compared. The terms of a ratio is the sum of the quantities being compared, and the expressions are separated by addition and subtraction. Well, that was not correct. Okay, I guess it is this one. The terms of the ratio are the quantities being compared. Yeah. Sometimes you have to add up the quantities being compared. And I guess this was mentioning a whole. So anyway, just misunderstood there. Three sisters are having are saving for a special trip. The ratio of Marcis, Marcis's Maurice's savings to Helga's savings is 9 to 2, and the ratio of Helga's savings to Gertrude's savings is 2 to 5. Together, all three sisters have saved $64. How much has each girl saved? Oh, wow. So how can you use a diagram to make this problem make sense? So we can make bars. I guess I'm going to pause this right here and get 